Hey all, hopefully y'all are having a great Sunday and a fantastic weekend. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the trading of Joe Schobert to the Steelers from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, in case you have been living underneath a rock, uh, we did give up a sixth rounder for him. And we also uh, split the, split his salary almost, I think, almost down the middle with them as well. Which is great because he was due $7 million. Plus, uh, we strip out all his guaranteed money and that stays with Jacksonville, which is nice. So, you know, he's uh, if... <clears throat> We could not uh, afford his full salary with, uh, unless they, they did eat some of it. And it kind of shows how desperate Jacksonville was to get out from underneath his contract that they were wanting to part ways so desperately that they were going to take on salary and take on such a Bad draft pick for a guy they just spent a lot of money on uh, just last year. So, you know, um, in the past decade or so, you know, I've been pretty frustrated by the Steelers. Um, you know, their, their big three playoff wins over that time. Uh, of course, no Super Bowls. Uh, they've really struggled with the salary cap in the last decade. And that's, you know, since 2011, that's, and we've seen it with the, you know, one bad free agent after another. You know, we haven't landed very many quality free agents over that, that time frame. Yeah. So I don't drink the Kool-Aid. The BS laced Kool Aid that the Steelers brass throw out, or uh, your mouthpieces such as uh, Labriola, Missy Matthews, uh, the Steeler Nation radio guys. You know, that's definitely not my thing. Yeah, I, I have a skeptical, realistic mind when it comes to a lot of these free agents. Because I don't just look at stats. I look at the tape. But, you know, I have uh, people get on their high horse and call me negative. Because I actually get off my butt and do research instead of regurgitating what uh, some Steeler mouthpiece has said or, you know, walked over to... Uh, Pro football reference and seeing 141 tackles and thought, holy cow, that guy is a stallion. How is he an all pro every year? Uh, you know, I'm, I don't have a choice on people calling me negative. And the only thing I can do is, you know, go with my track record on being realistic. And I sounded the alarm on Ladarius Green and his concussions. I said how terrible that was. Ah, uh, you're just negative flip. Said how Morgan Burnett was a terrible fit. Nah, you're just negative flip. Said how Mark Barron was, was a failed safety, converted to a linebacker. And how he was just a terrible player. Nah, you're just negative flip. Mark Barron's awesome. Uh, he wasn't. Uh, I, I ate some crow because I was a big John Bostic fan. And then the Steelers turned around and, you know, they, they kind of misused him. Look at him, how he's flourishing in uh, Washington. <coughs> so, you know. So was I just wrong? Yeah, whatever. You know, did they use him improperly? Sure. I'll eat, I'll eat crow just for being wrong that he was going to be awesome for us. You know, am I negative for talking about Vince Williams, about how atrocious he was in coverage? I've been bashing on Vince Williams for years. 
Yeah, and then his run stopping skills, you know, declined over the years. But people wouldn't admit it. But I was negative. Yeah, I, I've warned people about TJ Watt's contract being being an issue, but I'm just negative. Now he's just kind of hanging out at, at practice. Not participating in team drills and so forth. Yeah, I've been negative about the cap. Oh, geez, I, I showed a, a few weeks ago about, you know, go back and look at her 2011 talent. Now come back and look at her talent now. Look at her talent from 2015 or 2018 to now. But I'm negative. So, you know, it's people that would rather just give me a label than actually go out and look at some tape. Learn more. So, so now we got Joe Schobert here. You know, all that was reality with all those players. But people would rather label me negative instead of them eating crow. You know, the worst thing when writers come out and they get all giddy and get behind a, a Steeler player. You know, let's say that name is Joe Schobert. Look. I get that they're all excited, especially after Spillane and Ulysses Gilbert just, you know, face planted. Or, you know, Marcus Allen keeps floundering. You know, players that they have backed with all their heart and, and wrote plenty of articles about. But, you know, They'd only watch the, the broadcast. You know, how many of these guys actually watch tape on these guys? You know, they do not make the time to actually do it. You know, they don't watch the coach's film. Unless maybe that's in somebody else's work. You know, maybe their memories are a bit skewed from... You know, munching on some nachos, you know, dripping down their beards while they're going for their fourth PBR of the first half. Yeah, but later on in the day, they, they sit down and they write their, their article about Joe Schobert. You know, they got the Steeler Nation guys, Steeler Nation radio guys in the background. Pro football reference sitting in the other tab. Just thinking, man, Joe Schobert, 141 tackles. Wow. So they churn out another fluff piece with no original thought to it. They're just kind of regurgitating what, what has been said over and over about Joe Schobert. All the, the highlights, all the fluffy stuff. Yeah, they, you know, they said the same exact thing about. Blaine, Gilbert, Burnett, Ladarius Green, Mark Barron, and others. It's the same article. Just change some different facts, change some names. You know, I don't do that kind of fluff around here. That's not me. Yeah, I go and I actually look at the tape. So that kind of fluff does not exist here. You know, so if you are looking for like, uh, a fluff piece. Well, there's plenty of fan sites for that. Or if you want, uh, you know, some crazy lunatic like Mark Madden, you guys know where to find him too. <laughs> but, you know, I'm somewhere in between. Now that we got that fun out of the way, let's dive into some thoughts about, about uh, Schobert. So why is everybody so giddy about him from last year? So what are the Steelers mouthpieces saying? Well, 141 tackles, three interceptions, one touchdown, four pass deflections, two forced fumbles, two and a half sacks. You know, those are pretty standard for most of his career. That's what he 
generally puts up really close. You fairly consistent. So, holy smokes, how can anybody have a problem with 141 tackles? Easy. You know, you got to look at the tape. You can't just regurgitate, regurgitate stats from PFR. Stats don't tell you anything. Now, let's, let's see what a couple of uh, Jacksonville Jaguars fans said. You know, you are confusing productivity with actually playing at a level above replacement. Any average NFL middle linebacker like Joe would amass similar stats to Joe to Joe's last year. Playing on a 1 in 15 team while they're running out the clock in the second half by running the ball up the middle. Here's another one. And a lot of those tackles were like five or six yards past the line of scrimmage. And yet another one I would, that replied right after that. I was just thinking that. We need proactive, not reactive. You know, and that's, that's really hitting the, the nail on the head with, with Schobert, is he is not proactive. He is reactive. And it, it cost him because Schobert is not an athletic stud. And he does not really have good football instincts. So what other factors are out there that aren't in these, you know, fluffy stats about Schobert? What makes me get called negative for my thoughts and feelings on Schobert? Well, 20 missed tackles. Wow. That's eye-popping. You know, this is... That's something that has plagued them ever since, you know, he was at Wisconsin. Probably the most asinine thing that people say about him is how he is average or above average or even very good at coverage. Whoa, 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 whoa. The, 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 I, I just, it baffles me. Because even before I went to PFF, you know, I was watching the tape of him in coverage, and he wasn't good. But let's take a peek at some of his stats. 30 receptions, over uh, 42 uh, targets thrown his way, 71.4 completion percentage, 361 yards given up, three touchdowns. 12 yards per reception, 180 yards after the catch. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty terrible, isn't it? How does that make you feel about him? Are you okay with those stats? Well, now I'm going to break some really, really bad news to you. Those stats were Vince Williams stats. Schobert's stats are way worse. He uh, gave up 56 receptions on 71 targets, 78.9% completion rate, 616 yards given up, 11 yards per reception. Now, here's the number that is just sick. 379 yards after the catch. 379. That is more yards than Vince Williams gave up last year. And that's just after the catch. Yeah, sure he was targeted a lot more. But that is, he's giving up almost seven yards per reception after the catch. Oh, duh. that is just mind-boggling. It really is. But that's just not a one-year thing. 
Yeah, he's got a 75 completion rate against him for his career. 15 touchdowns. Now, this is going to blow your mind. 102.5 quarterback rating. That is, that's just incredibly sick. You know, and you throw that on top of his missed tackles. 20 last year, 15 the year before, 24 the year before that. And in his <clears throat> Pro Bowl year of 2017, he had 18 missed tackles. These are good numbers, folks. You, you can't whitewash this stuff away. Yeah. You know, do you remember how much y'all hated like Sean Davis because he couldn't tackle and because he was taking terrible angles? This is Joe Schobert. Do you remember how you just hated Vince Williams in, in coverage? This guy makes Vince Williams look good in coverage. Yeah, you know, the problem is is Steeler mouthpieces are are giving you all the, the fluffies. You know, they're, they're only showing you the, the rainbows and the unicorns. You know, they're not showing you any of these, any of the cold, hard reality here. This guy is not good. This guy is making his tackles down the field or in blowout games. You know, he is not uh, not constantly putting the hammer on somebody in the backfield or or stuffing them on third and one. He's racking up a lot of tackles. Sure, he gets some of those as well. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to say Joe Schobert is, you know, absolute trash. I'm not saying that one, one bit. Joe Schobert makes some good plays, but not very often. Not as often as people are thinking with these 141 tackles. You know, the problem is, is these mouthpieces and, and the writers are, all they're doing is they're, they're just watching one game probably from last year, the Steelers game you know, from memory or whatever. You know, I get it that the Steelers' mouthpieces don't want to show these negatives about Joe Schobert. But when these other writers are free to write whatever, but they're sweeping all the dirt underneath the rug. Yeah, they're, they want to ignore the cold, hard reality. Why? Why? So they can be the homers that they are? You know, that they want to cheer on only their team when it does good things? Well, that's not reality, folks. You know, and that's not what you deserve to hear. You know, you're grown adults. You can handle the negatives. You know, then you hear them... Make excuses for Joe Schobert. Well, yeah, geez, he's been on terrible teams. Well, you know, Miles Jack was on that same team last year, too. And Miles Jack gave up nine missed tackles. Yeah, granted, Miles Jack is no Joe Schobert, luckily for Miles Jack. But what about Miles Garrett? Miles Garrett and him were, were teammates for three years. I don't hear people making any kind of excuses for Miles Garrett. But Miles Garrett is so much better than him. Well, now, now that's another excuse. But I, I thought Joe Schobert was a, was a good player. Miles Garrett is, is an absolute stud. But he was still on some of those terrible teams and still was a stud on those terrible teams in 2017 and 2018. But now we got to make excuses for Joe Schobert because he's terrible in coverage and terrible tackler. 
So being on a terrible team makes you a terrible tackler for bad in coverage. I don't understand that fantasy world. Where's the reality there? Good players still play well on bad teams. Just like there's plenty of good players on, or bad players on good teams. Well, there you go. There is my take on Joe Schobert and his numerous limitations that are not being covered by uh, writers and uh, the Steelers media. Hopefully uh, this will prompt somebody to well, maybe regurgitate some of my stuff. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get labeled uh, being negative on all this, but you know, I live in reality. And these are real issues that I will be showing on the part two with the video of showing Schobert and his numerous issues. All right. Thanks all. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and pound that bell to get notified when I put up that part two. Laters.